Hi, my name is Kai Chan, a financial consultant, creator, and your host of the Creative Heart Show. In today's episode, I sit with Elvin, a lifestyle portrait photographer whose works look very much like stills from an Asian drama, filling you with whimsical and nostalgic vibes. We talk about photography being an art form that helps him to be a better communicator, the importance of connecting with subjects emotionally in creating compelling portraits, and many more good stuff in this episode. Enjoy the show. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Creative Heart Show. This is episode 8 and today I am specially excited because I have a very dear friend of mine here. His name is Elvin. Uh, who is a lifestyle portrait photographer uh, who actually honestly bro I have never really told you about this but uh, he is uh, really quite an inspiration of mine personally whose work I quietly have been modeling after like you know behind the scenes you know being knowing him for quite some time now so yeah for those of you who are not familiar with his work of course at the end of the show I will be linking up uh, his uh, socials in the show notes so be sure to check them out uh, but just to give you an idea, uh, Elvin's work is what I would actually describe as, you know, dreamy, uh, whimsical, most of the time nostalgic. It's almost like when you look at his photos, right, like peering into a fairy tale that is of Elvin's creation. Uh, give you a bit of like, you know, Japanese as well as uh, Taiwanese uh, photography vibes. That's how I would actually describe But I think words cannot actually describe everything, so be sure to actually check him out. And yeah, and today I'm just very, very keen, you know, looking forward to this sit down chat with him uh, to really learn more about his photography and journey. Uh, yeah, and uh, just to give you a bit of background, bro, do you know that all we know each other almost three years already? Is it? Has it been <laughs> that long? Yes. Okay. So, story is that, right, uh, LV and I never actually started off as friends in real life. Uh, three years back, we somehow found each other uh, on Instagram, follow each other's uh, works, and then realized that we both love Japan. Then we kept in touch, and then we realized that we were about to travel to Japan around the same time towards the end of 2018. Hmm. So what happened is that, uh, yeah, we just coordinated, we just like, hey, why don't we actually hit each other up, you know, when we actually in Japan. So uh, first time we actually met up was actually in Kyoto. Had ramen, went to tour around, shoot, at a temple with Fiona. <laughs> so yeah, by this December, right, 2018, right, it would have been three years. Oh, okay. So cool, right? You actually <laughs> meet a Singaporean friend, right? Not in Singapore, but Japan. So yeah, Instagram is too damn cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that uh, it's been three years already. I thought it's like still quite recent and yeah, wow, time just flies. Very nostalgic, right? Yeah. Matsukashi. Don't know when we can travel again. Um, I guess, <laughs> I think a few more years. Let's, let's hope sooner. Uh. <laughs> yeah, already I hope so. to go back already. <laughs> yeah, why don't we, uh, you know, for those who, uh, of, of the listeners as well as the audience who don't quite know about uh, your work, right, and, and, and yourself, right? let's start off from the beginning. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, yourself, your origin story, mm. and maybe how you first discovered photography. Okay. And I noticed that you bring props today, which is going to be very interesting and very looking forward to hear his story. All right, sure. Go so ahead. hi everyone, I'm Elvin. So thank you for having me here today <laughs> on this podcast. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay, a little bit on my story, just to let everyone know that I'm actually a very uh, introverted person. So most of the time, uh, okay, so before I started photography, um, I actually probably like never really go out to meet a lot of people. I probably stay at home. Really? <laughs> and yeah. yeah, I also like, I think I most of the time I'll be gaming <laughs> my okay. life away. Yeah. But other than that, like um, photography, I started like probably um, not very um, like recent, also like not very young. Okay. All right. So probably I would say about uh, 20 years old or 21 that time. So uh, my first camera is actually this. Ah, uh, no. Okay, sorry. This is actually my first one. Uh, this is like my parents actually like... They really? Have, yeah, this is wow. okay. It's actually like 1990 something already. So this camera, as you can see, the expiry date is 1998. Wow. Okay. So uh, this camera, my parents passed it to me when I was young to let me play around with it because it looks like a toy. 
But it's actually a film camera, as you can it's see. It's a disposable, like, right? Yeah, it's a disposable. But you can use it multiple times. Uh, yeah, you I can say. change it. You can actually change the film ah, cartridge here. Okay. Yeah, so it's actually quite cool. And I um when okay, did they pass it to you? When I was young, like about five or six years old, they okay. asked me to play with this. So I was like quite intrigued by this. I, I was like, hmm, this is quite fun. So I wanted to try a bit on like uh taking photos, like it's quite professional kind, like I always see on TV. Okay. So uh I think my mom loved to like take photo. Like she liked to model and stuff when she was young. Okay. So well, when we go out and uh, at times, uh, I will help her to take photos with okay. like film cameras. Cause in the past, we only use film cameras. So she, for the record, uh, I, I think right, if I, when I was young, right, my parents did pass me uh, their own camera as well. And also mm. I think there was another time it was my uncle's camera. Oh, okay. Pass me to eat fiddle with it only not even like turn it on and definitely did not entrust me to even <laughs> press the shutter because it's film and you'll ruin it yeah yeah your yeah. mom already trusted you with the film camera that young but um she actually guide me how to use it okay like, that's cool how to frame and stuff like okay you like that take and stuff then also that. your mom actually is familiar with photography as well um she's not familiar with photography okay. she's like you know like what you see like those casual uh, photographer. casual model <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, she like to take photo. I uh, like being take photo of. So okay. uh, like, uh, she'll like know some of the angles and stuff. She'll tell I me see. like, oh, take from here, take from here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like okay, I just like oh follow, and yeah. At that time, right, at such a young age, when you were being passed uh, the film camera, right, mm. how did it feel to you? Actually, I was like, I like the 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 loading part where oh. load the film wow, and stuff. Okay. Then after that, uh, once you finish the film, you have to send it to um, developing. And then last time, there's no computer one. Yes. You actually print out the photo. Yes. Then I like very. Uh, I always look forward to seeing the photos. Like when you print out, mm. then you can see like, oh my god, this <laughs> what I take and stuff. Yeah. So it's quite cool. Fascinating, like. Yeah, fascinating. Yes. But I I really forgotten what is the camera I use because. Okay. I no longer keep it and my mom actually I don't know if she throw it away or she sold <laughs> okay. it. Yeah. Okay. So these are only the cameras that I left with, mm. like that have memory of. Wow, and that's nice. Yeah. Back to how uh, I actually started like photography like recently. Okay, so after all this right, I actually didn't continue my photography journey. Oh, like didn't? primary yeah, okay. primary school and secondary school I actually didn't because I, I, I actually um okay, so I actually like a bit more of on the art side. Mm. I actually like to sketch a bit and like how I try to express myself uh, like because I'm actually like very introvert so I need some way to express Outlet. myself mm. yeah so uh, before like actually starting I uh, started uh, like before I start photography and mm. stuff I actually need a place like to write and draw and stuff so that's where okay. I actually started like um, uh, doing some realism sketching and stuff but then uh, of course it actually takes a lot of time right. then I actually like um, didn't continue for long probably okay. i stopped around like uh poly and stuff in the end i i feel like i wanted to change to something like uh it will be like a faster pace like not say faster pace it will be like easier and also i can like have more freedom and more time to do my own stuff okay so i try uh, another hobby which is uh i try to pick back uh photography i think that time i was helping my friend uh to play with like the canon I think she bought a Canon 5D Mark, I, Mark III Mark. or yeah, around there. Okay. Uh, she bought the camera. Then I was like, oh, okay. So uh, every time when we go out, uh, I will help them <laughs> to take OOTD. Okay. So I feel like, oh, uh, like the camera part, like, uh, like playing with the camera is actually quite fun. So this is around which year? Okay, let me think. Um, before, I just want to get a sense of the timeline. 2012. 2012. Yeah, 2012, around if I'm 2012. not wrong. So yeah. this is around uh, when Instagram started to get heated up already. Uh, yeah. More people start to post uh, on Instagram, right? Yeah, correct. OOTD, man. Yeah, correct, right, correct, yeah. correct, correct. Okay. Okay, so uh, when I played my friend camera, I wanted to get myself a camera to try. Okay. So I actually bought the most, uh, the cheapest camera I can find, which okay. is like Canon 700D. Canon 700D, okay. Yeah, then I actually played with it and mm. I, and I, and I think I started with a lot of what people actually do. Like, I don't really know what I want to show. I just go random. 
uh, I will try like street, I will try like probably like product, I will try like building architecture, I tried all kind of things. With like the basic kit lens? Yeah, the b- basic kit Nothing lens. Nothing fancy, Nothing just fancy. the standard setup. Mm, Correct. Okay. So at that point of time, I don't even know what I'm doing, to be okay. honest. Like I just uh, play around, then I just take photo and I just edit, then I feel like, mm, okay, <laughs> it feels like... Oh, you right. even started editing already, so you didn't yeah, like, I, I started post up? Like no, I, I don't post. So I post everything on Vesco, VSCO, this... Ah, okay, VSCO, yes. So I don't post oh. on IG. I almost forgot what VSCO is. Yeah, it's, it's a so very long. old platform. <laughs> okay. uh, but I think people still use it nowadays. Okay. Yeah, um, cool. Where you actually can edit your photos. Because last time I don't even know what Lightroom is. Okay, so at this point of time, you were taking just like, you know, mm. photos of whatever moments that you liked. Mm. Um, and you capture everything in JPEG at this point of time or already jump straight to RAW? Okay, so I started with JPEG. Mm, okay. I that don't really sense. know much. Oh, start like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know much about photography okay. that time. Um, then after that, I actually went up to uh, internet and source for inspiration and stuff. Yeah. So, um, okay, so before that, <laughs> I want to jump back to how uh, like how introvert I am, then okay. how I actually uh, pick like portrait photography. Yeah, I don't that's want to, what I want like, to know as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah move yeah. too much. To other details yeah. <laughs> right so um okay so i actually like um when before i started portraits that that period of time i tried street photography okay so uh i met up with a few friends that i actually know them through instagram mm. so uh actually it break out of my comfort zone because right. before that i take photo uh just by my own self right i walk around the streets whenever i see things i will just take i will post on vsco and then i see like Oh, I'm happy with that. I don't really care about like all the feeds and stuff, mm. Cause like VSCO, you have you edit and you feel like it's satisfied. Correct. Uh, like and you're then you happy post, you're happy. Yeah. So I what made you much. want uh, mm. like kind of like get out of your comfort zone to start knowing people? I assume you DM them, sort of text them. Uh, okay. So I actually started from um a community instead of like oh, okay. straight to uh yeah I actually joined like a few communities probably like InstaSG and also like SGIG. So like mm. I actually try to know people from like other like other hobbies and other photography uh other photographer. Mm. So um, so for those who yeah. are not very familiar with the communities in Singapore, uh, I, I'm not in them as well, but I think I've actually heard of them. Mm. SGIG actually stands for Singapore Instagram Group, right? Correct. SGIG and the other one would be... Uh, InstaSG. Uh, InstaSG, so Instagram SG, lah, uh, for those mm. who are not very familiar. Okay, Okay. so this group, uh, I actually met like a lot of, like uh, now I'm very close with them, okay. some of the friends. Oh, that's uh, nice. We actually take photos and then... Um, at the start, we actually like uh, probably when I know them, I will actually use uh, my friends as a model mm. <laughs> yeah, to try out. So, so all within this community one? Yeah, all within okay. this community. So we actually take all kind of photos, like some people take streets, mm. some people take architecture. Mm. So uh, there was a time I think like uh, we actually have a photo walk, um, which is like probably we actually do like uh, a bit of portraits. Mm. I feel like it's actually quite interesting. Mm. Uh, that's why I actually feel like um, uh, I wanted to dabble more on like portraits photography. Right. So uh, after that, when I start on portrait ph- photography, I feel like um, I wanted to uh, infuse a bit on my own like um, what I think like is like the feel or the emotions. Right. So I actually uh, like edited it in a very dreamy way. Okay. Like uh, much more different from people. La. Cool. But before that, right, uh, let's slow it down and like go a little bit deeper. Okay. When you first mentioned that you started to experiment with portraits, right? Yeah, correct. You used the word dabble, right? What part of portrait photography actually made you feel that, hey, this is quite, especially stand out a bit more. Uh, mm. It's a bit more interesting than compared to other genres like street architecture that you've tried since it's actually in this group, right? Because usually like, I would think that you know, I mean, I've gone off on a few photo walks before and mm. um, uh, to, to me, it's always because different people like different things, right? Some right. people like street, some people like architecture and when you're on those photo walks, uh, I, I tend to, uh, you know, take whatever the rest are actually doing. 
Um, so I, I mean, I, 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 I probably wouldn't actually think so much as well. But it seems like there's something that's actually interesting about portrait photography that when you first started to experiment with it, right, mm. something actually stand out. So I'm just curious, mm. uh, what actually specifically stood out for you about portrait? I feel like it's more of a emotions because okay. I'm. I feel like I'm more of a emotion kind of people. I okay. can kind of feel like emotions through the photos and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I feel like I want to express myself through these photos and stuff. Mm. If let's say, uh, no offense, but uh, if let's say I were to take other genres and stuff, probably I, I won't get the feel like I will for, for mm. portraits. Like it's different for people. I know some people Definitely. like, like uh, architecture, some people like um, probably landscape and stuff they mm. actually feel a connection towards it yeah. yeah it's like how i feel a connection towards portraits and i feel like street actually have the element as well like you actually mm. capture the soul of the person like what they are doing and stuff and it's like sometimes it's at a very natural state but i feel like uh rather than street because i don't like to like uh like cam and like like to uh like walk around and stuff like yeah. i do like to walk around okay uh, and take photo but i feel like portrait is like i'm able to create my own ideas and mm. create my own movements and stuff right. that i want to show to people which is where i feel like my actually sketching and art actually um play a, plays a part like i want mm. to express that movement it's sort of like filming like you guys know like when you do filming you have to do all the script writing and stuff Correct. it's almost the same thing it's just that you have to think like behind the scene like how people will actually feel when they look at your portrait it's like uh it's like probably replay a scene but in a photo kind of way okay yeah so, sort of something like that right so um you started to dabble photograph uh, this portrait photography mm. uh, specifically can i say it's around 2015 2016. um okay let me or is it earlier than that okay so okay so if you are talking about timeline right i actually gotten my first camera which is uh the my Canon, Canon yeah which is around um if I'm not wrong, it's 2015, mm. December. If okay. That's where I remember it. Because like, I think my first portrait, it was with my uh, close friends, uh, close primary school friends. Right. Uh, we actually went around that and tried, tried okay. uh, like the lens and mm. I tried like, uh, I actually bought the 50mm because I mm. saw like a YouTube recommend, mm. like that's like the good portraits right. uh, lens. Right. So I tried like 50mm, also the kit lens right. and I played around with it. So that's the only two lens I actually held on to mm. all the way to uh like probably um after i like um like after i finish i like, not say finish after i uh play around with it like uh i tried portrait photography with my friends and stuff mm. i actually uh wanted to try like my own shoot and stuff try own shoot. yeah okay. like us like probably a uh, summer i don't know this I, is after like one year of it's not straight, straight immediately. Photo. Okay, so okay. okay, not to confuse you guys any further, like uh probably 2015 all the way mm. to 2017, I was in the army. Okay. So Makes during sense. that period of time, right, I didn't really touch photography much because mm. I can't shoot every Obviously. day. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where I feel like I needed a, a way to improve myself. I feel mm. like I actually lack a lot. When I look at a lot of photographers, like uh, probably like Asians, like probably um, like local as well, mm. I feel like uh, they actually inspire me more to shoot uh, mm. portraits photography. Mm. So I wanted to find like um, a way to actually edit the the way that I actually like it. Okay. So I actually uh, probably what I started, I actually use probably one and a half years, right? Not to just okay, I just probably I will shoot. Uh, like during Saturday and Sunday, I mm. will join the community and walk around to shoot some photos. Mm. But most of the time, right, I will spend my time uh, editing photos. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So I will experiment with every single uh, buttons, like every colors and stuff. Actually, what? Uh, Again, what's it's self-taught. Uh, yeah, I actually watch Google. YouTube. Yeah. Mm. So this is Lightroom already, right? Uh, yeah, it's Lightroom. Wow, okay, so okay, I cool. actually try Lightroom and stuff. Because right. I actually watch YouTube and tutorials yes. and stuff. Yeah. And I actually like uh, learn color complements and also like uh what what is like what is needed to actually edit uh to the point like edit to the point where I actually like it. You like and the actually, photo, yeah. yeah, use Photoshop as well. Mm. So I actually learn both of these. And then after that, uh, I'll try to reach to like, okay, so sometimes I'll actually use a reference as an example. Mm, I'll try definitely. to see someone photo, then I'll try to recreate the photo colors and stuff definitely. and see if I can able to use my skills 
to uh, recreate someone's photo uh, yeah. color. Yeah. If let's say I'm able to do that, I'm able to create a color where I'm satisfied with, where I can feel like it actually relates to me more. Mm. So I actually use this period of time and try to um, define my skills and stuff. That's cool. I mean, yeah. like, that, that was like the most that, that you know you could actually afford to do because of army, right? Correct. So you, uh, yeah, I, you I, really, yeah. It's, it's amazing that you actually make full use of that time. Yeah, I think like I don't want to waste my time uh, like probably doing nothing and just like take photo then I think like uh, I am good enough because I always think that uh, there's so much more to improve. Even now, right. I feel like I'm still like all the way back. I still got so much more to improve. Of yeah. So, During that time, mm. would you say that um, how do you feel when you were editing and about that? I mean like mm. usually I'm embarrassed to say this, but actually I'm not so sorry. Uh, I am Singaporean now, but you know, I started as Malaysian, so I actually never went to the army. But a lot of my friends are Singaporeans, of course, and uh, most of them, what they tell me is, after they book out, right, it's very shag one. And then they just want to chill and want to actually have fun over the weekends. Mm. Um, uh, but you, you, you kept at it, right, during the, these two years of army. Uh, I'm curious at a point of time when you're editing, right? Because learning something new definitely is, is going to be quite challenging. Mm. How do you feel at a point of time when you were going through your own photos, editing, like that actually made you push through and really want to learn more? Is it like uh, editing and photography as a whole at this period of time is something that you started to notice whereby you could actually channel what you felt at the moment through editing? And that actually gives you a sense of satisfaction, is what I'm actually mm. curious about. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what's not stopping me um, from um, actually doing what I like to do is I, actually I'm passionate about it. Mm. I feel like uh, it's the way I can actually relieve stress and I feel like quite happy doing this. Okay. So cool. uh, when I'm editing photos, I actually uh, have a lot of things in mind. Like I wanted to think about like, can I actually make this photo like uh, a bit more towards this kind of feel, like probably more emotional, or uh, probably more of a happy tone. So mm. I want to try different stuff. Sometimes uh, I would even try like more of a very hype kind of stuff, mm. uh, style, yeah. uh, which is quite uh, trendy in the past. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I didn't like I go with it, lah. <laughs> 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 but I didn't really go with it after yes. that. Yeah. Because I think it's something just to try out. Like if Definitely. let's say I can edit. Uh, like that style, mm. uh, then I probably know where my editing skill uh, mm. probably is. Like, I won't say it's like top. Mm. I would say like I'm able to manage what I want to edit. Yeah, yeah. So and something I'd like to add is that through this process, you also know what you like mm. and what you don't really like. Like it's not for you. Right? Yeah, correct. Through this kind of like whichever style that you, I think mm. it is part of the process that you finding your own style. Would you yeah, say so correct. Mm. I think like. After that, uh, like probably I once I like master not say master <laughs> once I actually learn like how to edit, uh, I will actually go out to find like models like not say models like, mm. uh, probably like Instagram, uh, searching for people who are suitable to mm. uh shoot. Mm. Uh, that's where I actually like probably ask like people who are close to my friends. Mm. First, because mm. I think I'm not very take a uh, small step first. Yeah, though. take a mm. small step. <laughs> so actually. Uh, as an introvert as myself, yes. like yeah. uh, I wanted to step out of this comfort zone and mm. actually like uh, probably um, use this chance to probably uh, improve my social skills mm. and talk to people okay. more. And that's where I actually um, like improve this uh, social skills by mm. a lot. Uh, like till now, I think like I'm actually quite comfortable uh, with meeting new people and stuff. Comfortable like, already, like. yeah. Like in the past, I would be like, oh no, 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 I don't have Yeah, to. I was gonna ask you like, how, how, how was it like when you first started out asking like your first uh, uh, Instagram model friend, um, you know, through your close friend? Okay, so how, uh, how you feel actually, it? <laughs> it's quite scary. <laughs> so I'm actually very nervous and I feel like, oh shit, what if I screw up this okay. and stuff? I think a lot. Uh, what was that shoot concept? Okay, so that shoot concept was actually like more of a vintage kind of feel okay. and stuff. Uh, wanted to shoot like at Chiang Bahru, okay. yeah, that area, because I actually live near yes. <laughs> near there. Mm -hmm. And I think like uh, I'm quite familiar with that place and wanted to try like uh, shooting around that area. Mm -hmm. And um, I think like uh, when I was asking uh, the person out, uh, mm -hmm. I think like a lot of things went through my mind, okay. like how should I prepare this and how should I uh, edit this and mm -hmm. what kind of feel should I go for. Mm -hmm. and 
uh, probably it didn't turn out as good as I, as I expected. Mm. Yeah, so I think like everyone will have this kind of experience where they actually shoot and then uh, it, it didn't turn out what they expected. Yes. So I think like uh, it's actually a learning point for me. I didn't actually stop there and I feel like, uh, okay, I, what did I do wrong? So every time when I do something that I feel like uh, it didn't meet like, my expectation, I actually go back and reflect like, um, what should I change or what should I um, like improve on? Mm, yeah, definitely. I guess. Like, I think all, all, all shoots are like that. I mean, I have a fair share of uh, such uh, uh, moments as well. Mm. Um, if you mention that you are quite introvert in like asking people, right? Uh, I don't know whether I do it deliberately, maybe I do, but if you were, to, I mean, cause you know my work as well, but mm. for those who, 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 who didn't really notice, right? Uh, my models are basically two people, my wife as well as my sister-in-law. <laughs> the other two people that I've actually shot before, right, are two friends who uh, one coincidentally another photographer invited and the other uh, just so happened that through our conversation we just felt like hey why don't we actually come out and shoot and then that's it. So you can say that I've only shot like four models in my life. <laughs> so I think you are not as introvert uh, as, as, as you may seem now already, uh, now already like I feel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, so you're now going back to like the first shoot that you actually did with your uh, mm. friend, right? Right. Your uh, portrait with your friend. Um, I'm curious because that is like your first, I would say, uh, pretty serious uh, themed photo shoot la, that mm. you were actually doing for your, uh, with your friend. Uh, Let's talk about the preparations for the shoot, like because like as as a beginner, right? Because mm. we want to, I think a lot of our listeners, you know, of course they are very seasoned photographers as well, but there are also a lot of beginners, and and right. I think they will probably be very curious, right? And when you first started out, right? How do you learn about even preparing for your shoot? Mm, okay. Yeah, quite a lot of time, surely got a lot of mixed emotions, very kanjong and all that, you know, like and but it seems like because I know you like to prepare stuff. Mm. Um, but how do you even learn how the, that process? Okay, I guess shoot, that shoot. process, right, actually mm. you have to backtrack on a photo. Mm. So I actually sometimes, uh, when I look at inspiration photos, like mm. when I was, when I first started, mm. I actually um, see like what they actually have prepared, like for mm. example, props and stuff, and mm. also what kind of uh, lens will be able to shoot that but then of course that time at that, that moment of time right I only have like two lens 50mm and also the kit lens oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the only two lens I will use to shoot okay. so throughout my whole journey all the way mm. uh, for 700D right it's all only shot by uh, the 50mm and that's enough for me I think mm, that's nice. the only lens I really need okay uh, for the entire shoot mm. and I didn't really thought of like going uh, to other like probably like 85 and stuff at that point of time. Yes. So I feel like um, that's all I need to prepare at that time, at that point of time. But eventually whereas I shoot uh, like probably like when I shoot more, I realized that I actually need, needed more things. Mm. Then that's where I actually um, prepare more stuff. Uh. I will actually prepare things like uh, flowers and stuff, like all the yes. props and nowadays, stuff. Nowadays, right? Yeah, nowadays. But at that point of time, your first shoot, leh, like were you just because you mentioned vintage, it mm. was a vintage shoot, Correct. right? Correct. Do you, do you prepare in a sense like it's more of like modeling after another uh, shoot of photos that you've seen or it's something that you start to think like, oh, this is something I want to experiment? Like, I think uh, I did uh, do some storyboarding, which is like where wow. I will actually do um, <clears throat> think of like how people actually shoot and mm. see the angle and stuff. Mm. Then uh, I actually try to learn like why actually they shoot this angle and stuff. Mm. Then uh, from there on, I actually uh, try to try to um, uh, probably direct the model to a sense where I feel like uh, it actually match the, the kind of style I'm trying to go for. I think most importantly, right, uh, for a shoot to go towards your what you want for the team, it's mm. actually mostly on the clothing itself and the color pairing. Okay. So, uh, if let's say you don't know how to pair colors or like you don't know how to like um, you can't visualize what you want to shoot for that that point of time I think like uh, it's a very crucial kind of thing because I think uh, what I learned before like I go fully into portraits is that uh, colors is actually a very important thing uh, yes. for portraits photography mm. I think like 
uh, okay, other than another thing is I want to talk about important thing is actually the soul of the uh, the person. Okay. <laughs> what I mean by soul, right? <laughs> very it's actually serious. very in depth. <laughs> okay, it's Thank like goodness, we are not it's like the emotions <laughs> or the soul of it. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like when you look at the photo, you can actually feel the person emotion through the photo. If let's say you just take a very casual photo of OTD and stuff, you won't feel anything. You'll just yes. see like, wow, this photo damn nice. That's all. You won't feel like, oh, I feel like, oh my God, I can feel the connection. Like I can feel like this is actually very depressing. And I can see like, oh, this is very happy. Mm. The model is generally happy or stuff. Like she can actually bring out the mood. Right. I think this feel, this kind of feel is mostly like probably if let's say you uh you work with like professional model, they are mm. able to bring out to you. But if right. let's say you work with people who are not professional or who are like probably still building their portfolio, building their portfolio mm. I feel like challenging. They yeah, they probably uh, are very shy and like they won't know how to actually open up themselves. Correct. And I I think this is something that uh which is I would say the number one reason why I actually love his photos really because uh, I can vouch for it that if you were to go and check out his photos right you really can actually feel the the how the models actually feeling at that point of time just by looking at their eyes which is actually very amazing and I feel that it's very difficult to to do especially I would say that of course like what he mentioned right he started photography like really serious uh, about 2016, 2017, so that's about four to five years. And I would say that that is quite a short time to really master this. Uh, I'm not as hardworking as him, I would say, in terms of photography, but I, I feel that it's, it, 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 is, it is a challenge that, that I wish to actually master one day. And that is really bringing the emotions through the, through the model's eyes when, and, and you capture that within, within that frame, which is very amazing. And, and some of the photos, like right now, I'm, as I'm actually talking, right, some of the photos that I remember that I really like from him, that I can really feel the person's uh, you know, emotions is the one with the goldfish. Oh, okay. The one with the goldfish. Uh, there's also the one in the lake with uh, flowers. Lake with like flowers. With the, with the flowers and then like she's almost oh, lying on the okay, lake. Okay, yeah, okay. correct. Um, and and it, one very good point that you actually mentioned I want to dive into is that uh, you mentioned like, especially these models are like, you know, your friends who are still building their portfolio. They are by no means like Vogue models, professional, that kind of stuff, like industry professionals. So especially when it's emotions like, um, you know, a bit more moody, right? Mm. Uh, you mean a bit more, you may want to portray the kind of a depressed uh, emotions in, 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 a, in a photo. Um, how do you prepare your models to do that? Because it's not natural. Like I, I, because I don't think that you, you, you actually engage models that happen to be very moody that day. Mm. But how do you actually prepare your models right to feel like that? Because I think that's amazing, and I think I can't do that. Most of the times, right, I will always default to happy photos because most people when they take photos, right, they by default is happier, man. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so I, I want to know that because that's actually very cool. Okay. So uh, just a backstory first. Yeah. When I first started, I also don't know how to handle emotions. Yes. Actually, everyone have a different way to communicate with the model. When mm. I first started, I was quite awkward. I don't even know like what's the right way to move, uh, direct them and whether if I'm correct on uh, that sense. Mm. There's no correct mod, uh, directing, I would say. Yes. Like it's, in the end, I feel like it's more towards uh, uh, what my friend actually told me. Like actually, I met a lot of friends and they actually give me really great advice. Mm. So one of the advice I received that is actually um, you have to open up yourself, mm. you have to be more uh, transparent, you have to uh, communicate. Mm. And then uh, another thing is uh, how you and the model will actually have this teamwork or chemistry. Okay. So if you have this teamwork and you both agree on something and you both can feel that emotions or that photo that you want to create, it's much more easier to create that photo. And then when you direct her or when you actually um, sing her into that mood i think mm. like probably uh, you can actually sometimes you can actually tell her some of the stories like some actually sad stories and stuff or if not you can actually use music to actually, for example like what are some of the things that you do specifically to prep the model and get into that mood, i think that, that there is no uh, specifically because i think like everyone have a different kind of way sure uh, to direct the model into like the but based uh, on what you can recall, what are some of the okay. things that you, that you 
done. For example. me, I will need to know how the person is like first. Okay. Because I think everyone works differently. Right. I won't like uh like just tell them to oh okay go into mood and stuff like I think. If let's say I'm very comfortable with that person, I feel mm. like when I talk to that person, uh, she's actually uh, or that model is actually like uh, more of like um, easier to uh, get into mood. Then right. I won't need to like do a lot of work uh, okay. to get into get her into mood. Mm. But if let's say um, she is quite shy and she's like very uh, first time into photography, I feel like I need to know more of her than uh, uh, how to trigger like her emotions and stuff. Okay. I would say I'm not like expert at this point of time right. yet because I'm still trying like all kind of ways uh, to get uh, the model into mood. I right. think like uh, some of the uh, model they are very hard to get into mood because I think like uh, I don't really uh, like some of them right are very introvert as well. Mm. I'm actually introvert as well. So mm. the thing is like if let's say uh, I'm fail to like let them open up then yeah. I think the whole shoot it's like <laughs> it's like very awkward yeah, kind of okay, feel. Understand. So if let's say uh um at that point of time I feel like uh I'm able to engage them more, I, I actually open able to uh, open up mm. them more, like uh like they feel like they can like uh, express themselves right. more. That's where they actually feel comfortable. They Definitely. are actually able to sing and to move easily. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they actually trust you. So if let's say they don't trust you, they feel like wow, I feel very uncomfortable with this person, then the hand gesture and everything will feel like very you stiff, uh, one, right? yeah, very stiff and very like uncomfortable. Like oh my god, you can see like the model like, um, like very uncomfortable kind of feel like, like you can see it, the pose and actually the feeling that. It what do you do to relax then? Actually, I will uh, talk to them more. Mm. And I'll share more about myself and ask them to share more uh, about themselves. And then, what do you mean by sharing about yourself? Like probably, uh, I will. Uh, you mean at the middle of the in the middle of the shoot? No, no, no. When okay, so most of the time, I will actually prepare like thirty minutes beforehand. Mm. <laughs> okay, so this is just my own thing, uh. Yeah. Uh, I will shoot. Please uh, share that because I think that's that's, I think that's very cool. When I walk towards that area, right? Mm. Uh, I will actually talk to the model more. Mm. I won't like straight go to the shoot. <clears throat> okay. Because I want to have that engagement. Mm. When I talk to that model, I want to like know more about them and actually what they like to do and stuff. And uh, from that on, right, I actually can engage that point of like conversation to get them into mood. Like let's okay. say I need a happy year mood, right? I can yeah. actually tell them like, oh, like uh, what they have shared, right? Uh, mm. Actually to trigger their happiness and stuff. Uh. But uh, actually based on individual because some of them like quite introvert they don't share right then it's yeah. harder for me actually then how, to, uh? know, to know them then what do you do can you recall uh, if let's say if that's mm. the case mm. I will really need to be more <laughs> open okay. I will really need to uh, share more about myself like actually like oh like what happened to myself like uh, like what happy moments and actually trigger ah, like some yeah okay. some of the so fun your own stuff. personal story yeah some of my own stories okay. and stuff Okay. So it's to uh that story is feels like um I'm sharing with, with them is actually not related but it's actually try to um let them know more about being let them feel comfortable mm. and let them open up more then actually trigger their emotions I but see. sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work so if it doesn't I guess work happier stories mm. will be easier to share but actually not really no some one. people right they are more towards emotional you can actually feel like from the start they actually have the very emotion kind of look so uh. Like that, you mean like um, I may not be using the right term, but you mean slightly a bit more depressive kind of mood, is it? Yeah, okay. I feel like some of them already have that mood. How do you encourage them to channel that into the shoot? Like, do you tell them like think about this moment that you've been through? And yeah, try sometimes to I will tell them yourself. right, like uh, probably uh, I want like more of a depressing mood, and probably uh, you can think of like some of the more of the depressing moment. So but you use certain words lah. Okay. Yeah, I think like sometimes I use certain words, but mm. if let's say, uh, from the uh, this is probably like more recent. Like in the past, I actually try different ways to direct models because I think like I always want to experiment with different ways. Because I think like till now, I'm still not very confident with directing. Like it's mm. still a, a part of me, right? I feel like I still lack in that sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that's interesting. Mm, I, always, <laughs> I don't feel that. <laughs> I always feel that. Uh, there's a lot of things for me right. to improve. Right. I will never get satisfied on my own like, uh, take uh like kind of work. Okay. But it's not like I will never be satisfied. It's like I feel satisfied, but it's not enough. Okay. I always want to improve. Understand? Yeah, okay. I feel that's the set mindset for me on photography. It's okay. always like, 
not enough need to improve not enough right. need to improve that's why i always like try different ways to improve like for example dieting uh emotions and stuff is something that i feel like i still have a huge gap on right mm. and i think sometimes i will ask like some of my close friends to help me identify some of my problems that i have mm. like for example um i think one of my trusted friends i think Chen Han and also mm. uh um in the past i think i will ask some of my community friends as well mm. i think another friends i always uh, ask will be joel i think mm. he's one of the community friends that right. i'm quite familiar with mm. and then i'll ask them like uh probably like what they feel about this photo and i think recently i also asked another constructive photo. feedback yeah That's constructive feedback mm. i would ask like a uh, much more close friend as well mm. Mm. Cool. like i think like uh they actually have like experience probably like uh they are, will tell me like um my photo actually lack uh the soul uh sometimes some, sometimes they actually tell me like probably i lack um uh, confidence or probably lack of like um what's that called dark things and stuff mm, mm. that will actually from there i will actually improve and mm. see how i can prepare for the next uh shoot and mm. i'll slightly improve from there yeah i think this is a very big department that i lack as well because i I feel like sometimes I, uh, like through directing, uh, you know, uh, my wife for shoot as well as my sister-in-law, right? I default to more towards poses and angles, like mm. you know, trying to create leading lines with the limbs and that kind of stuff, <laughs> rather than focusing more towards the emotions because uh, I struggle to do that myself. Mm. Yeah, is it something that like, like, like let's say for example, right, when you actually shoot. Um, and this particular model is not actually uh, uh, enacting the kind of uh, um, um, emotions that you want. You would stop the shoot, take a break a little bit, and then like, what would you do at that point of time? Actually, I will um, show them some examples of the shoot. Then, uh, mm. like, let's say the mood board and stuff. Yeah, I will exp uh, explain to them like um, what is this photo, mm. and also how uh, how is the mood is like, mm. and how uh, will we be able to get there. But the most of the time, right, I feel like poses is great. Mm. Okay, uh, I won't say like poses is like uh, not a key point. Correct. But I would say like uh, I focus more on emotion than mm. like uh, probably like the leading line and stuff. Yeah. Because portraits, right? I feel like it's a mixed element uh, eventually but then you focus more on humans but not more on like the how the leading lines behind exactly. and stuff if let's say you focus on leading line and stuff i feel like you will lead to the subject itself but then it's just a nice photo yes you don't have that element where you have that so you want a combination of everything so yeah. you need to have uh be good at like uh, all kinds like probably you have to um, be good at the emotions yeah, you have to be good at the like the framing and mm. also be good at like telling the stories behind the, the photo itself right and that's when you know when you do certain poses the emotions actually sit very well in those posture right like mm. it is not awkward in a manner that kind of yeah thing. Correct. That, that, because that's my personal experience like sometimes it just so happened maybe i'm lucky that day that i managed to communicate well uh, that um, you know the model actually feel what I wish for them to actually feel and then like you know somehow I feel like eh, the limbs suddenly feel more natural sitting in that frame compared yeah. to those days that when I recall right then um, I don't communicate that well and then the posture just just doesn't feel like you just feel like there's something missing that kind of thing mm. I think um, <laughs> how do I put it I think like more uh, if let's say I sh like those kind of poses, right? Mm. I think will be more towards like fashion or probably more towards artsy mm. or more towards um like let's say um streets and also um some kind I think like probably like lifestyle as well. Some some of it need pose right. posing and stuff. Right. But I think like most of the time I who wanted to capture candidates moment more. Capture candy moments. Yeah like more of like a natural kind of states mm. natural state uh, yeah i think like uh that's where i wanted to focus on which is the next one i actually try to move towards more towards uh like japanese style photography mm. can you share with me a little bit more in terms of like japanese style like for those people who are not very familiar 
Okay, so I think like Jap there's no define of Japanese style. Okay, course, but for yourself, so, yeah. Uh, what people always call this style in Chinese is called Xiao Qing Xing. Okay. okay. In trans literal My Chinese translate, very bad. Can you <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> literal translate is called little fresh. Little, little fresh, fresh. What okay. what it actually means, right? There's no this kind of uh, word called okay. little fresh, but <laughs> okay. there's this term called xiao qing xing. What okay. it actually means, right? It actually means that um a very refreshing kind of feel when you look at a photo. You feel happier. Okay. You feel like it actually lighten up your mood. Okay. So it's a very calming kind of photo. So you okay. look at it, you feel very happy. Sometimes it feels a bit of dreamy. Sometimes it feels like a bit of more of like you feel that it belongs to Jap uh, more of the Japanese kind of photos mm. where you can relate to. Cause sometimes you see yeah, yeah you see blue skies you mm. see greeneries it's right. blue green and stuff mm. it's more of a nature yes. kind of photos which I want to move towards to like uh, which I always have been doing. Mm. So the transition actually came from uh probably like. After I do a bit of portraits, I actually started from the uh, dreamy. Mm. I think like sometimes people always like say like, oh, I take very dreamy kind of photos. Yes. I think that's where uh, I started from, uh, which is 2017 all the way to uh, probably 2018. Mm. So after 2018, I actually wanted to move towards a like different style. Right. I actually try to explore around. Okay. Then I actually saw this photo that uh, stood out to me. And I think that person is actually Hamada. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, we are so, all very familiar. Yeah. Hamada Hideaki, right? Yeah, Hamada Hideaki. Those of you who are not very familiar with Japanese uh, portrait photographers, this guy is amazing. Um, I don't think I am that familiar of his background compared to him because I think he's a much bigger fan of his than me. Uh, but uh, he, he takes photos, like last time, if I'm not wrong, uh, photos of his kids, right? And yeah. also his uh, family members. Okay. Uh, mostly through a mix of film as well as digital cameras. Mm. Uh, he always managed to bring out that very natural emotion that when you see those photos, right? It's, it, you will be very curious, like, oh, it's so natural, it's so nice, like, he always managed to capture magic moments, mm. like, magical moments, I personally feel, and it's just very natural. So, if you've never actually seen uh, Hamada's photos, I encourage you to go and check them out. But, and yeah, he's a very big fan of this. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. where I actually uh, mentioned about, like, emotions, and mm. so, like, uh, I think that's where I feel like his photo actually can literally talk to me. Mm. It's like, you can actually feel it the emotions behind the photos yes. like even though right some of his photo is like just one person and the whole thing is like just blue mm -hmm. but you can feel the emotions through that person the the, the model face some right. people might say like oh the model looks like very pretty and stuff but some of it is not true but mm. you can see like he also took like for example like old lady exactly and also like some uh, some young young guys and yeah, stuff like yes. yeah he take very different kind of portraits and stuff and I can feel that emotion through that photos even though it's like uh, there's not much on the background there's no leading Simple. line and stuff yeah. yeah there's always that emotion that captures you it's mm. not like very complicated you have like wow four lines exactly. you have like um, I don't know like bouquets everywhere and stuff yeah. but it just speaks to you uh, on that sense like wow that photos and it's actually um, basically not being covered by fluff la, is what yeah, I would yeah. say like, you know, like, using all these beautiful elements like bo uh, bouquet uh, the, the you know, different props to enhance the photo but his one is more really more of like keeping things simple and just let the emotions of the person speak, for, speak in the photo yeah. I wouldn't say like uh, all those is not uh, wrong yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely definitely yeah, yeah. i feel like uh, to me it's just that, it's a very cool style. yeah it's a it's <laughs> what i like yeah all right so it's a very um my kind of thing mm, i won't say you, yeah la. everyone will need to follow this definitely, this is not the rule definitely. yeah i mean photography rules is there but then uh, for me i would like to follow what i feel i'm more of emotion kind of person mm. so that's where I actually devil. Uh, I would say I would try on like Japanese photography mm. kind of photography, uh, which is why I call it Xiao Qing Xing. Mm. <laughs> All right. Um, so from there on, um, I think from there I actually try to um, edit towards that style. But mm. of course, at first I didn't actually uh, get near it like yes. what people say. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get that kind of color correct, but slowly I try to figure things out because I think like I always like to play with editing yes. and stuff. And I 
eventually managed to find a balance in between where I can get the colors right and stuff. Mm. And then getting the colors right is one thing. Most importantly, right, is the dressing, how you pair the dressing and how you pair the background to the mm. color. So another element that I want to mention is the color, where I just not mentioned before, color yes. pairing. Then after that, um, next is probably the emotions. Then after that, uh, props is actually optional. For me, I would like props because to me, I feel like I'm still not at a stage where I can actually ca capture like very natural state where there's no props in it. Because I think like if let's say there's no props, right, the model hand confirm feel a bit awkward. You need yes. poses to yes. pull through it. Unless yes. you can capture the emotions, then uh, you probably will make sense. Yeah, you won't need that uh, props in in that case it like, makes a lot of sense yeah, well. you mentioned color like color theory mm. you encourage people to like you know go and learn about color theory right yeah for example what i would say like um like let's say you want to take a photo uh in a greenery then what do you think match green okay red, so for example green uh you have red mm. yellow so red is actually more stand out yes. from what you see uh or uh egg, from a green like patch of field. Mm, because if it's complementary. Yeah, it's a complementary mm. kind of color. Mm. Yellow is actually a side color. Yes. So if let's say you pair green and yellow, it actually looks kind of nice. Yes. Yeah. Then uh, you can actually have other colors, which is more of a neutral, white or black as well. Yes. But uh, probably you don't want to have like uh, too much colors and stuff. You try to keep it to a minimal and stuff. Otherwise yeah. you'll look very busy, right? Yeah, correct. Mm. So I think that's a very, uh, that's a thing that I always want to take note of. Like sometimes you can't really control the background, but you can control the angle you should. Yeah, the angle like you want it to capture. For example, let's say uh, in a very busy area or a busy street, you will find that that spot where you actually feel like probably there's a white wall, mm. there's probably like a few mm. things here and there. Mm. Then you think that will be nice, then you can actually shoot there. Cause I think that won't be like uh, too messy. Mm. I think, yeah. I think you actually set up a very good framework for uh, all of us and even I think beginners to like you know start to attack uh, portrait photography that is what you mentioned just now the three things which is um, color I think it's very important to actually learn color theory uh, I am pretty much self-taught as well in fact uh, I, nowadays thankfully because of social media because of Google and everything you can pretty much find anything online so I would encourage everyone to really learn about color theory I actually learned this only later part of my photography journey actually but i think it's very super important to know what is monologous colors what is complementary colors uh, please go and you know, do that and then after that elvin actually mentioned about uh emotions the key pinnacle part of you know uh, really bring out you know uh, the, the 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 model's emotions in the photography and then third would be props i think these three it's pretty much just quite a good basic framework to actually start already, right? Mm. But I feel like props is optional. Mm, optional. You can go without props as well, mm. as long as you know uh, what you are going for. Is so it easier for beginners? It's easier because mm. um, you will know what the uh, where to place the hand. Because sometimes you don't know where to place the hand, yeah. then you ask them to do some pose. Yeah. And then if let's say the pose doesn't flow well, it looks quite awkward. And also I think Another thing that I also learned throughout this journey, mm. I think most importantly, I, I think I want to credit to Chen Han. Actually, he taught me like most of this. I've actually like, never met him before. Like, I would yeah. really love to meet him. I think yeah. he's a very great inspiration for me, like uh, for a portrait photographer yes. in Singapore. Mm. All right. So he actually, uh, one thing I learned is how to capture model in a very nice uh, angle. Because mm. I think very important is you have to uh, know what's the model nice angle for example some people will look better in middle some people look better left or right mm. so you will need to know like the person look better on left or right how do you know do you observe or do you ask like, okay so the person? Yeah. one thing is uh face shape you need to look probably let's say the person have a, a different kind of face shape then yes. what kind of hairstyle actually suit the person mm. if let's say a uh, square face shape probably you want to try to cover or probably you want to tilt towards an angle, you actually show, show the jaw lines and stuff. Mm. So importantly, most of the people who actually want to show the jaw line, because I think that's where people actually look more uh, nice, mm. like nicer in the angle. Some people probably look better in the front because they have a more defined um, angle as well. Mm. So I think like probably you have to observe it because I think 
at the start it's very hard to tell. Right. But uh, subsequently, when you take a photo, you will notice like uh, the model different angle, which is actually nice. Right. Like probably the person have a nicer side angle, probably the person have a nicer front angle. And most of this, right, I think it's better like uh, if you can portray it, because I think like, let's say you're shooting for clients and stuff, mm. they'll actually appreciate it more, like you can actually get their uh, better angle, right, and yeah, I think that's the most important kind of things that I actually learned. Then sometimes I think like uh, probably you want to uh, like make sure they have the S shape and stuff. Like yes. you want to make it like uh, very masculine for the person. That's true. Yeah, I think like for men, you want to make it very masculine or mm. stuff. I think it depends on the model whether they want masculine or soft. Mm. Okay, so we don't have the right to say that. So we actually want to know more about them first. That's where I feel like we want to get to know more about them. Mm. If let's say they actually prefer this style, we actually go for it. Right. I think more towards like what the person like uh, is like their personality. We want to portray their personality in the photo. Mm. We don't want to portray like a very fake kind of personality as well. Correct. Mm. But things like, you know, uh, learning how to pose uh, certain models to be a bit more feminine, to be a bit masculine, how would you advise them to learn this? Because it's like, I don't know, like when I first started out like instructing models, right? Um, I wouldn't know like, can you be a bit more feminine? Like, <laughs> I, I don't think that is the word, but like, how do you personally do it? Actually, um, I look up reference. Okay. So I actually, uh, when I'm free, I'm actually um, doing a lot of research. Right. Not say research, like, mm. I will just browse through, mm. let's say social media, I will look through online mm. and then I will see some uh, magazine and stuff right. and see uh, what they actually do to post the model. Because uh, I think like, for what I should and some people, uh, what some people should is actually different. Like what I should is more of a lifestyle. I would go for more of a Japanese kind of magazine right. and also probably go for a uh, like those kind of photo books. I actually have a lot of photo books. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then I will see like um, what the photographer actually do. Mm. Some of it is more of like a fun. Some of it cause uh, more of a moody. But now I feel like uh, actually a more fun or more happier kind of mood is mm. harder to bring out than a depressing mood for me. That's mm. what I feel. Cause I feel that uh, to bring a model to be happy, like genuinely happy, not just smile, right? Yeah. It's very difficult because okay. you will really need to make her laugh and stuff. You will need to bring her yes. throughout the whole journey. It's like sort of like a, a journey between you and the model. You try and capture the journey, capturing the moments. So mm. I feel like that's the style Makes that I, I try to create uh, for like what I call it the street photography. It's a different street photography. Yes. Yeah, it's like the street portrait photography where I actually bring the model through the street. Sometimes mm. I'll bring the model to some of the favorite spot, like some back alleys, like Little India and stuff. Mm. And and I'll actually have like a, a scene where the model will actually try to recreate like a very happy scene. They run towards uh, the camera. Like those kind of people who call it the boyfriend kind of perspective. Right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. But it's actually like a, a very happier kind of mood. Mm. Uh, which is like uh, always portrayed in like uh, Japan um, magazine and stuff. I always see it like where um, it's very candid moments, right? And it's happier and much more like lighter when I see it. Because I feel like nowadays I feel like a very happier kind of mood will be uh, better for me. I feel like I want to spread more of a positivity, like a very mm. happier kind of outlook. So in that, in that kind of scene, right, you give a very exa uh, good example, but I just want to dive deeper to really help some of the uh, you know, beginners who are actually listening. So let's say, for example, there's very nice lights and you want to mm. uh, you know, capture that very happy moment. What do you tell the, the model to do? Like, in what, what do you instruct so that you can actually bring out that, that, uh, that uh, emotion that you want? Do you tell her to run towards the lights? Like, okay. Just a simple instruction? Or how? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so, <laughs> okay. so for uh, uh, for this, I wouldn't say there's a, a very defined kind of way to, uh, there's a very straight yes. answer to it. Mm. I would say like, it actually depends on that scenario. Yes. So you have to think on set, like probably, um, let's say you are shooting and there's a nice sunlight that sh shoots straight towards that kind of like, mm. probably like a ray of light. Mm. Then you can actually think of what kind of, uh, 
angle or what you look like sometimes i will ask the model to stand uh like directly on the uh, behind mm. to get capture the rim light and stuff mm. Mm. sometimes i will probably ask the model to stand uh near the shadow to play a shadow play and sometimes we will use props and com sometimes we will actually just use like uh we won't use props you'll just use whatever we can find mm. on that street mm. sometimes we can use plants we can use yes. like um probably like you know like poster and stuff yeah. i think like poster sometimes uh, we can just re reenact what the poster is doing like more kind of like fun ah, bring out the okay, fun okay okay so through, whatever that actually inspires you at that moment that help her to mm. uh, help him or her to actually portray what you what you Correct. wish that yeah mm, so i think cool. like that is more towards like uh another style that i want to try mm. so i think hamada style is actually a, a bit more different also i mm. think like he also like try a bit of street i realized that he have a he have, he have a photo that i still remember till now i think it's an umbrella mm. a model holding umbrella walking down a sort of a bridge kind mm. i think that's sort of also a street kind of style but uh, i feel like he actually paired the colors beforehand mm. Mm. so you can actually see like uh, there's a blue and white uh for the umbrellas and also the dress right. and also the photo of that that particular place you can actually see there's a blue and white if mm. you actually look back to it uh, you can actually see he matched the color beforehand he actually know which place uh, to bring the model so i think another very important point probably for people to take note is like uh if let's say you take street you can actually remember like uh like probably you dress up the model with white yellow color mm. then you can actually match the um clothing with uh some of the complement colors right. nearby and stuff okay, i think it's back, back to, to the color colors. theory yeah wow. that's cool uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's very 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 important that you actually brought it up. Um, let's go a little bit into uh, you know photo editing. Okay. Uh, we we jump a little bit to photo editing because this is something that I want to ask and it's uh, a personal um, I would say personal struggle of mine as well. And maybe uh, some people actually you know a lot of people out there actually come across this uh, particular uh, hurdle is what I would say. All right is that um, when you're doing so much of something sometimes it feels like work uh yeah right uh and photo editing is actually one of it like when i first started out i, rem I remember uh it's something that uh, i always look forward to like what you mentioned play around with all the uh, functions and then after that with all the sliders and everything and then when you discover a style that you like you were like wow i actually learned something today i achieved something today but over time right it can start to feel a bit of like work um, i'm not sure if you feel that and if you do right i would like to know and i think a lot of people will be curious to know how do you push through that and still you know keep your passion for portrait photography for editing all this going actually for me oh you don't feel at all <laughs> no, no, no i do feel okay so okay. i actually do plan ahead mm. so i roughly know uh, what place and what uh, directions I want to go for. Yeah. So I already know what I wanted to edit. Okay. But if let's say there's a situation where it doesn't meet like what I expected, mm. most of the time it doesn't because sometimes it's the weather that affect. Like probably um, I expected it to be this color and stuff, and right. it actually become very dull and stuff. I cannot like just okay we already meet up and we have sun and stuff we yeah. just cancel then i will just like try try out some Improvise. different style oh, yeah okay. then probably that's where the difficulty comes in sometimes the color don't really match what i expected mm. and then there will be frustration there i think you'll feel like wow i'm keep working on the editing and stuff i feel very frustrated mm. uh, i feel like um not productive at all yeah. i will take a break okay I will probably rest one to two days and I'll look back again. Okay. And I'll see like, eh, probably I can actually tweak to this way. Do you feel like at this point of time, I have to revisit that photo set again? Actually, uh, I won't feel that way because I think like, um, I will want to make sure that the photo reach until a point where I'm satisfied. Okay. I think that's for me. That's so my working style. You have yeah. An I actually aim towards something like I want to make it satisfied. Let's say it doesn't meet till I'm satisfied, right? I will probably revisit, keep revisiting until I'm satisfied. Mm. But there's some photos, right, where I 
uh, actually abandoned because I feel like uh, there's probably not much I can do about it because it's it really reached a point like um, like I think that's not uh, wait there's a point like I feel like not every should right will go according to what we want yes I think there's few should right I shot and I don't re really like it mm. then uh, I think I just probably uh, will replan or we should or probably I will just uh, leave it because I think like uh, it didn't go according to what I expected and also um, it didn't turn out like the feel that I wanted to that, yeah so you actually come to a point which I feel that uh, I personally experienced before mm. and I think a lot of people do as well probably uh, has any shoots that you've done right you went through it went like you know uh, didn't go as well as we expected probably really quite bad to the extent that um, you like it kind of you know made you feel very defeated and then you didn't want to continue uh, has that got to the extent before yeah actually uh, yeah i think <laughs> have okay okay so uh for me last time uh when i should okay yeah. even till now when i have uh, when i get very nervous yes and let's say if let's say people are watching me when I'm shooting, okay. I, I'm very affected by it because You mean like the public? Uh not public. Like some some people they will actually bring, bring their friends. Yeah, bring their friends and to see. But I think I'm sort of okay with that. Uh I'm I feel like uh, I'm comfortable with that. But then the thing is cause I still have that introvert in me. Mm. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like I'm being pressured to do something. Mm. But I'm being pressured, I won't feel like I will meet the expectation I mm. have. So it will actually affect me somehow. So from there on, I will try to actually uh, get into, uh, like try to um, Im improve this part of expect. I will try to improve like how to uh, overcome this fear. Because mm. I think even till now, I still feel it. Like sometimes uh, some certain clients, I also feel like a bit of pressure here and there. Like I won't feel like um, it's a casual shoot. Like uh, I can yeah is i can express myself uh to do like things that um will be a bit different a bit like rev revolutionary yeah, like a bit different yeah like yeah. those kind but it feels like i have to do a very fixed kind of thing mm. then i feel like it is a bit of different uh, expectation there already mm. then i feel like i'm being pressured to do something that's where i think like the mindset is very important mm. so uh, I think for people out there who are struggling with problems like this, mm. like me, mm. <laughs> who is like uh, not able to get uh, to the expectation yes. they want, yeah. like probably being pressured right. or like uh, they feel like they are not confident with their work. Mm. I think one thing is that you will need to adjust your mindset. There's no uh, out way to go for this. You can't like probably one day you will be like, oh, suddenly I'm confident right. <laughs> to do this. It's really you have to think about it uh you have to make sure that okay uh you have to tell yourself that uh this um the same as like what you have been doing casual work and stuff and uh, uh clients and probably people you have shoot with is always the same mm. they have the same expectation as well so you always have to keep that mindset like mm. you will need to uh, tell yourself that you like this photo you should keep it uh this way mm. you shouldn't uh like make it like uh, a bit too much difference and stuff because even mm. with the expectation of the clients the clients find you for a reason they actually feel like they actually enjoy your photos like your style. and like your styles mm. and stuff so you want to keep it that way mm. so uh probably when i started or uh, like some of the shoots that i actually shot i always had the pressure that oh the client want this and this and this yeah. then i feel that like, oh, i'm being pressured and ah. in the end it didn't turn out that well i feel quite guilty about it because I feel that I didn't did I didn't do my best uh, for the clients. So it's really more of learning through the process and Correct. experience, lah. Yeah, because I think like a lot of people, uh, I actually saw it online that mm. where people say like taking clients and also shooting casual is different. Like there's a lot of pressure in it. Yeah, sure. that's true. Mm. Uh, uh, <laughs> I experienced it, and probably the the only way out, right, is your mindset. That's uh yeah, that's the only way out. And I think like there's no other way to save it. Mm. But there's uh client's work that I actually quite happy with and satisfied with. And yeah, there's always like here and there. So mm. I think like um what if let's say a shoot that doesn't go uh 
to like what you like or mm. it doesn't suit what your clients like. Mm. I will actually like propose alternative and stuff like. Mm. I see. Because I think like what I want right ultimately is not like to earn. Okay, this is just a side job and stuff. Mm. I want my client to walk away with a uh, happy photos and stuff mm. like things they actually they are satisfied with la, Makes that sense. I try to la. but sometimes if let's say I, I'm not able to then I I feel like I will need to improve on that aspect mm. yeah makes a ton of sense um, so I guess going back to uh, uh, photographers who have actually started out beginners mm. um, you know the with the amount of experience that you uh, currently have uh, over five to six years of uh, shooting mm. um, what would actually be your advice, uh, you know, reflecting on your own experience, what would actually be your advice to your younger self that you can actually pass on to, uh, you know, people who have actually just started out, um, you know, to, to hone their skills specifically in portrait photography? What I think are some of the things that, you, that stand out to you that you would tell your younger self? I think it will be just start early. <laughs> start early, yeah. Yeah, because Meaning? I feel like... Um, if you are afraid to take that step to do what you like, mm. then after that, you will be always be afraid to do it. You will just have that mindset that, like, okay, I will try it next time, I'll try it next time. If let's say you have a concept in mind, just go with it. Mm. Even if it fails, right, um, just learn from that mistake and then move on, then try again. Yeah, that's what I would tell myself. Because uh, in the past, I won't think that um, I'm very confident enough right. to do uh, shoots and stuff. Uh, I think that point of time, I actually didn't have like very high self-esteem. I think like yes. for me, I feel like um, I'm, when I shoot, I feel like, oh, this feels like not good enough and stuff. I think till now, I still have that mindset that I'm, I need to improve, mm. but I won't say that I have very low self-esteem that uh, in the past, compared to the past. I think that's a very, very good advice. And I'm glad that you actually uh, bring it that way, which is to just start, right? Mm. Which is something that is actually on its own, right? Is really very challenging for most people. Mm. And um, to be someone who you mentioned as introvert, right? I mm. imagine it's even more difficult. And, right. and to be able to do that, to just start and get out of the comfort zone, right? I feel it's something, I think that's, I mean, to, to, to really give yourself a pat on the back, it's something that I feel is actually very amazing, mm. that you actually managed to Thanks. do that, which I feel that, yeah, it's really very cool, uh, like, living example. So, um, if there are any of you out there who actually feel that you, you yourself are introverted, I think, hopefully, this is something that is uh, very valuable for you to, to, to listen to, uh, and probably try to implement that. I mean, like everything is on your own timeline and you know, at your own uh, comfort. I mean, yes, it is stepping out of the comfort zone, but doesn't mean that you should do it to the point of uh, torture, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, at your own time that you take a little step at a time. Like for example, what he, what LB actually did was to actually engage his close friends as experimental models and then slowly, slowly take a larger, larger step, you know, organized shoots, which is something that I think I need to do. Mm. <laughs> I think yeah. I think it's better to start early. Mm. Mm. If let's say you guys have any idea, just go with it. Uh, don't let the ideas hold you back. Then after that, like I mean, not ideas. Don't let your fear yeah. hold you back. Yeah, I think like that's very important because that's what I feel. I wasted like uh probably like one two years thinking about oh my god, what if like that? What if like that? I think people don't really uh spend that much time thinking like what you think. Mm. They won't care about what you think. So I think like, just go with it. Makes sense. Yeah. So um, let's move on to a little bit of uh, talking about film photography because you do both the digital and film. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a bit, uh, I don't want to use the word controversial, but I don't think, but I don't think there's another way to actually do that. Um, there's always this talk about, you know, editing too much of your photos when it comes to digital photography. Mm. And there's also, uh, you know, uh, the more purist, which is like film photography is the way because you don't do much editing or you do minimal editing. Um, personally, my view is that in this day and age, right, where most of the photography that we do is digital, I think the post-production, which is the editing itself, is part of the entire art process, mm. personally. How do you feel about that? Like, you know, all this conversation about 
editing. No, you edit too much of, of, of these photos and stuff. Okay, to me, right, editing is actually an identity. Mm. And also how you take photos is also an identity. Actually show a part of yourself who you are really are, like what you actually represent. Mm. Like you can edit like very exaggerated, you can edit like butterfly, you can edit a dinosaur behind. Maybe that's your style. Mm. I actually saw some uh, photographer, a Japanese photographer, yeah. he ed edit uh, Ultraman uh -huh. <laughs> uh, in some cities yes, and stuff. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yes. And that's uh, his identity. Yeah. And I enjoy that as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's a very different kind of perspective. Mm. So I wouldn't say editing is wrong. Mm. I would say it is it, just your own principle, your own value, or your own identity, how mm. you're gonna portray it. I don't think there's a right or wrong to this. I would say like uh, just go with it. You wanna I edit agree. film, you wanna edit uh like your photo, I I think it's just your identity. There's no right or wrong. People can say things, but you can't control what they say. I just agree. like do what you like. Yeah. It's it's really like uh you know it's being who you are right. Correct. Okay. It's like really bringing your own uh, own self expression into the photo itself, mm. rather than uh letting what people say that is right or wrong to actually dictate your kind of photography. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it takes me some time to actually do that, uh, to, 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 to learn about this fact as well. Because last time I used to think that oh later uh, I post this photo or a lot of people would think that I edit too much that kind of stuff. But nowadays. Sometimes I get even a bit lazy to even edit stuff and that, that's just me and I just put it out there. Mm, I think, yeah, <laughs> your own identity, what you like is the best. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to like, probably, I think listen to people is good. Like when you want constructive feedback to improve, you listen to people. Mm. If let's say there's a very toxic comments and stuff, you can actually filter out. And yes. That's like, it won't help you. You know that it won't help you, then you filter it out. I think like, focus on what, that will improve you. Mm, mm, that's more important. When you first started out, right, maybe because like, you know, it was during that 2016, 2017, but I, I guess most of us, when, you start, when, we, when we first started out, you know, uh, photography, uh, you obviously have a huge following right now uh, in relative to a lot of, uh, okay, I'm thinking my, myself, like really, really, really. Okay. But when you have almost like zero following, right, what pushed you through? Like, was it, Reflecting back, uh, you know, how do you how do you think about growing a following, or was that not your focus at all? Like it was just the portrait photography that you wanted to focus on. Actually, I would say right at first, uh, I was like, wow. Uh, when I started, I didn't really focus on like followers. Mm. All right, in the middle, when I feel like I gained some um, people who actually like my work, I actually started to uh, focus on followers. But then, it actually bring back to a point that. Uh, when I focus on follower, it actually um, didn't really like, what's that called? It actually affects me on one part, affects which is affect my work. Mm. I feel like uh, what I'm doing now is like cater to people mm. uh, what they want to see. But then I forget that I actually want to focus on what I like to do and what I want to portray, which is where I still stand on my ground that uh, I want to focus on doing what I want to do mm. rather than what people want to see. Mm. Yeah, if let's say I want to do what people want to see, I would went for like more trendy kind of style. Yes. And then I just fish for more followers and likes, then that would do. But then uh, I feel like I want to portray things on my own way and I want people to see like my own identity. If they don't like, then be it. I think like, I, I mean, the followers still affects and likes might still affects at some point of time. Sometimes you think like, eh, is it my photo not good enough and stuff. But then it boils down to the point like, I think it still boils down to mindset. Like, um, likes and followers might still affect, mm. but you yourself must still like the photo itself. Mm, I agree. If let's say you don't like the photo, you feel like people like the photo, then no point. Because you don't, you own self don't like it. You feel like people like it then you think you are happy because people like it. Mm. Yeah. Social validation, which is something that I uh, briefly talked about uh, on my uh, IG yesterday, which yeah. is that, um, yeah, it was an experience that I actually went through, uh, especially because like, for the recall back that six months when uh, we had the opportunity to travel uh, with uh, my wife and I uh, to Japan, uh, that was the period whereby um, I feel that looking back, right, it's a, it's a personal growth in photography uh, or the lack of it, I'm not sure. But I take it as something that's very positive because it was the period of time when I actually discovered that, right, um, 
there is always this thing whereby when you actually travel or you want to actually take all the kind of bucket shots that you, that you want. Like this is the nice one. If I take this on, I post on, I edit this way, I'm going to get like 200 followers like the next day, that kind of stuff. Uh, and that was the period whereby I realized the fact that uh, I was giving up more of the precious moments during the trips rather than, you know, uh, for the sake of taking the kind of photos that I visualized and in the end, I didn't even got that good of a photos anyway. But I felt like that was a very good learning experience and, I, and, and that was when I started to realize that, hey, it's actually important to be, continue to strive to be authentic in, your, in the kind of photography that you actually do. Mm. So I wanted to ask about your photography influence. So you just now you mentioned Hamada Hideaki, but share with us a little bit more uh, in terms of like, you know, uh, what are the other kind of influences that actually help you to shape your photography style? Okay, so actually I have a lot of influence, okay, I think. Cool. Please share okay, because so, I don't know. <laughs> okay, firstly, um, I, before I started portraits, I mm. actually saw some uh, photographer uh, portraiture um, photos. Mm. I think one of it is Kelvin Bong. Uh, okay. He's called Kelvin ne Navigator. Mm. I think when I first saw his photo, it makes me want to delve into portraits photography. Mm. That's where I actually changed from like a random to portraits. Okay. After that, uh, when I want to discover my style, I actually uh, found the found the Japanese kind of style, which mm. is Hamada mm. Hideaki. Mm. Then after that, uh, I started to know uh, more people who actually do Japanese kind of style in yes. Singapore. Yes. I think like uh, I met Chen Hai and stuff, and mm. I think he actually influenced me quite a lot uh, on like like he actually taught me some of the kind of things that I should take note of. And mm. I think he's a very great photographer. Mm. And I think. Other influence could be like Japanese photographer. Um, like uh, one of it, I think that I actually enjoy the most, if I'm not wrong, is actually last time I actually referred to Takeru, mm, Takeru. and also um, Sakai. Mm. Ta yeah, if I yes. mention his yeah. name correctly. All these are on Instagram. Yeah, correct. So um, these two are one of the. the uh, others that I actually noticed mm. and also some of the very famous photographers uh, that are doing their own um, like or publishing their book okay I think nice. like I actually got, got to know them through friends mm. I think like Yoshi, Yoshiyuki uh, I think he's more of an artsy kind of photographer mm. I think it's a different very different perspective I actually enjoy it as well because I don't think I want to limit myself just to one style of photography I yes. like to explore Yes. Even though I don't uh, post like uh, a lot of different kind of style, mm. I think I for myself I like to explore like different kind of road. Sometimes I want to try this, sometimes I want to try that. Mm. But eventually I will still go back to what I like to do after I try out. Right. I just want to see like how it feels to take like different kind of photos and stuff. But how about um, I'm curious, what kind of role, if at all, uh, movies, anime, or even music play a part in in shaping your photography style? I think Japanese drama okay. and also uh, some, I wouldn't say anime affect a lot but mm. I would say sometimes the scene actually uh, reminds me of something mm. but most of the time I always wanted to try to um, go for a very, what's that called, rural setting mm. in Singapore mm. so I would actually see more of a Japanese drama to actually yeah. get that feel. Sorry uh, to interrupt. A lot of your photos are sometimes I imagine, wow, I never could imagine to take to take some like those kind of photos that don't look like Singapore in your photos. <laughs> like they actually really look like Japan in like some of the parts and I'm I'm very amazed like how you how you even find out those places. Like, actually yes, all these influences is it? I think like most importantly, right, you need to travel out mm. to see how Japan actually real, uh, looks like first. Right, right. So once you actually know how it looks mm. like you can actually imagine how Singapore have that little similarity and how mm. it can actually play a part to it, how you can use that advantage to mm. tweak it to look a bit like Japan and mm. stuff. For example, like the rural area, I think it's much more, uh, it, it doesn't really represent like Japan and stuff, but it can more of a, represent more of like a different kind of setting, like more of a right. countryside and stuff. Mm. And I think that's like something people would, We'll never see in Singapore mm. because I think Singapore is more of a city area, and then 
uh, rural site, I think it's more of neglected and stuff. Mm. And I wanted to bring out the rural area where people don't really go to and, and don't really touch that area more often. I think mm. like that's where uh, the beauty, the nature of beauty is. And I think I wanted to capture that moment. Mm. I think uh, that's what I try to aim for. Do you watch anime when you were young? Oh yeah, I love it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Would you say that like anime and like, you know, maybe your experience in gaming at a young age play a role in shaping a little bit of a photography style? Like that's what you like. Mm. That's what I'm trying to get. I think like know. anime, mm, maybe a bit, mm. but I think gaming definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. So mostly Japanese drama. Like. Yeah, mm. correct, correct. Music, right? Like? Music, I always listen to Japanese music, but then the yes. thing is, it doesn't really uh, relate to um, like my shoot. Like. I feel like more of like a visual kind of thing. I think mm. I'm more of a visual person. I, I see. actually see and I remember things. Okay. So sometimes when I see things, like let's say I see a location, I see a place, I will remember that location. I, I have that memory where I can remember location. Mm. So it's a very convenient kind of memory where I Quite can cool. actually remember like a very vague image in mind, then I can actually dis like display that image out. That makes and sense. I want to uh, yeah, visualize. Something personally I like to do during shoots is to play certain Japanese music that I like. Oh, to I think... channel that kind of uh, moods. Do you do that? No, no. <laughs> I think that's a very different style. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess Maybe. that's your style of like shooting yeah. and how you work. So I but guess... you definitely play music where you edit, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, correct. To get you in that mood, right? Correct. correct. But <laughs> but shooting that, that that period of time, I think I don't really have much music mm. unless focus more on the interaction. Yeah, yeah. I think really want to know that person well, and the closer you are with the model, right, the better you can bring out the model mood. Mm. That's what I realized as well. Like some of the model I work with, like not say model, just friends that I work with very closely, they are able to invoke the emotions easier when they are more comfortable with you. Mm. Yeah. So very important is always communication. Try to uh, even let, like let's say uh, you want to hit uh, like like ask the person out uh, for shoot. You probably want to get an understanding of how the person is like and also uh, how you're going to communicate with the model as well. Wow. So I guess it's more of a preparation. Like let's say you go for interview, you need to know yeah. like, all kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing because you want to know uh, who you are dealing with and also uh, probably um, how to get them comfortable. But of course not to be a creep, like ask them like yes. <laughs> uh, very personal kind of stuff. Lah. I think like very important, you still have to have that boundary, like what thing you can ask and what thing you shouldn't ask. Like probably um, just have to uh, have a like a friend kind of relationship with the mm -hmm. model where you actually like, let's say you're shooting with your friend, how will it be? It's like learning improve learning to improve yeah. your eq skills correct correct i think that's <laughs> something i learned a lot oh. from like being a very Just introvert cool, right? person to i think up to now i think i feel like i'm able to um talk uh better i guess compared yeah. to the past where I don't really talk, you know, yeah. when I, I'm when I'm young, I'm just like uh, I can keep quiet the whole day and stuff, and I can don't interact with anyone. So I think this is very cool because like uh, uh, what I've actually learned from you. I mean, I, I kind of guessed it like through our few years of friendship, mm. uh, but now I really understand that you know not only you found photography as the kind of a medium outlet. To express or you know your 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 artistic side, but it is also uh, an outlet for you to really learn about being a good communicator, which I feel that's very cool. Mm. So um, now that you are you know at, at a level of a, a photographer that, that you are, what are you excited about or what are you focused on right now in terms of like you know learning or like working on your craft? I think there's so much more to learn. Okay. So to me, I feel like um, I'm still not there yet. Uh, I don't think there's a there. There is like, for me, I'm still not um, happy with my goal yet. Mm. I think I still got much more to learn. Uh, firstly, I want to work on more of my, uh, on the emotions. Mm. I still feel like some of my photos, probably most of it, like I still feel as 
still a bit of lack of emotions. Mm. There's still not enough uh, to capture what I want to capture. Mm. So I think like sometimes people might think like, oh, wow, this is nice and stuff. But to me, I still feel that it still lacks a bit on something. So that's where I actually learn to improve on that something that I feel that I actually lack of. So uh, I think I won't like stand to a point where I feel like, oh, I mean, I think I learned enough. Oh, I think I, I, I have mastered it and I, I'm ready for everything. I think there's no such point. I think yes, like I it's always a continuous journey for me. Yeah. And people would think like, oh, I master everything. But actually, you still got a lot more to learn than what you expected. Yeah, I think like to me, um, there's a different part of learning. Then mm. I think it's always like uh, continuously all the way to O or something. Mm. I think like, yeah, I feel like uh, right now what I want to focus other than like uh, honing my skills uh, probably is communication wise and stuff. I think like I still um, I still feel that I have a lot more to improve. Mm. Uh, probably like uh, trying to put myself out there to talk to more people. It's nice. Yeah, I think like not moving towards like extrovert kind of yeah, <laughs> personality, yeah. but still I still to yourself, like. yeah still. Um, feeling comfortable and also like knowing more about people and I think that's very interesting knowing uh, other people's stories and sometimes I really like to talk to people on um, IG to mo know more about them like mm. probably like uh, how they are like as a person then mm. I think how I can actually um, plan a shoot according to their own personality and stuff like I think a very casual uh, street shoot and they actually portray their personality and I think like, yeah, in the future, probably would probably want to like start a business in like photography and mm. stuff, but not doing Exciting. photographer, but as a like someone who managing like, um, let's say information and stuff. That's but nice. yeah, that's the future. I think as a friend, I'm looking forward to witness your journey further, <laughs> see how you progress. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So uh, we finished like uh, basically the main part of the question, the next mm. section, right? It's uh, will be quite brief, but it's more of rapid fire questions. Okay. Uh, some of the questions are actually from the people that I've actually asked from Instagram. Oh, okay. I'm really curious to, to know, you know your, your thoughts on things. Uh, but the first one is something that is actually, uh, let's start with something that's actually quite fun, mm. uh, which is not just for uh, beginners, but like you know, people who are in the casual photography uh, category, uh, mm. the iPhone folks ah, is basically okay. what I would say, and I think it's very applicable for a lot of people. Mm. Just want to actually pick your brain a little bit. Um, I, I would like to ask, like uh, for example, right, um, what would be your one tip uh, that you know, doing doing iPhone uh, can be a casual portrait photography, can be OOTD. Uh, one tip to that someone can immediately apply to really enhance their portrait photo taking. Okay, I Based guess. On top of your mind. Um, really important is color. Color. Yeah, because I think like what you want to do, right, to make you stand out or make you enhance your photography, you can't really change the lens and stuff. I mean, you can buy the lens and equip, but if let's say. In like a case, a simple iPhone, yeah, yeah, you don't have a lens yeah. to equip on it, then you only have that focal length probably. Now iPhone has like multiple focal length, I realize. <laughs> but I mean, uh, with that focal length, yes. I mean, you can actually try to do uh, like color pairing and stuff. Actually, that actually makes your photo stand out mm. more. For example, you can have like a everything blue, then suddenly a yellow, actually makes everything pops up. Ah, then okay, it actually okay. makes, it feels like, wow, it, it has a wow effect and stuff. Right. More than um, it's just like probably you see like oh very normal and stuff. I yeah. see. So other than that, yeah, I dealing think dealing with colors. Yeah, other than that, I think like the the rest I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. you cool. can actually follow through. Cool. Mm. How about uh one photo trick right that mm. you feel you personally feel is very underrated. Photo that trick. is not done enough. That if let's say you know if you are dealing with iPhone photography mm. right, that is something that uh. That, that dramatically would really enhance your, your photo taking. You personally feel it's underrated, like it is like a secret like that, you do this on it's almost like unlocking your iPhone portrait photography or OOTD photography. 
Okay. Um, for this, I think there's. I don't think I have a much secret to this. Okay. I think very key important point is lighting. Lighting. Yes. Mm. Lighting change a lot of things. Cause other than color, right? I think I forget to mention lighting should be the top priority. Okay. Cause how what um whichever angle you are shooting, right? Mm. Everything like actually for photography, everything is all about lighting. Mm. So other than moods and stuff, I think lighting is the top priority. So, uh, how you light up the model face or how you light up the subject and stuff mm. is actually a key point. Like sometimes uh, we don't really have need to have like a like a straight light and stuff. We we want to play with dramatic lights and also like the shadows kind of thing. Mm. So I think that's a very important kind of or a way to enhance your photography for. Like you mean like stuff. Uh, soft light, right? For those soft people light, not very yeah, familiar correct. with the like technical terms and all that. Correct. Mm. So it's not like the hard light bounce on you and stuff, like. mm. Of course, uh, then suddenly your forehead suddenly like light up very bright. Yeah, yeah, correct. <laughs> correct. I think like uh, you you will need to take note of how to handle lighting and stuff, like. mm. That's I think like one of the key fundamentals that I forget to mention. Mm. Uh, I think like how you play with the lighting. You don't want like shadows here and mm. here and here because I think. That's one thing that people always call it the killer sunlight. I think like not uh. say killer sunlight, it's like the sunlight that is like not very glam to the face where it's actually top now. Mm. It's the 12 noon light uh. where to 2 p.m. This is yes. the time, right? Uh, you won't want to go out to the field to shoot where the sunlight actually casts down and your model will have the eyelashes uh, shadow yes. at, the, yeah. Yeah, at the cheek and stuff. That is also when your girlfriend will actually be very pissed at you if you yeah, take correct. such photos. So <laughs> that's what you want to avoid. But that's uh, another thing is like, it's not totally you can avoid uh, yes. like 12 to 2 p.m. shoot. Mm. You can still do that, but probably with a cap or uh, uh. probably you want to use a props to block, block the sunlight uh, where the sunlight actually casts the shadow to the eyes and stuff. So it makes very awkward like a panda and kind of mm. stuff. And another tip is actually you can if let's say you have to shoot 12 to 2 p.m. like kind of timing, you can actually go indoor where the sun actually hit mm. with the lighting and use the lighting uh, to your advantage. Like let's say it actually bounce from this building to another side and it actually have this ray coming down. Yeah. Then uh, that's to your advantage. It softer. Yeah, you can right. actually use it. So it doesn't need to be like um, you have that straight lighting, then you have to hit your face and then uh, have to have that soft light and stuff. Yeah, I think you have to really see how the light works to your advantage. Makes sense. I think one very key point, right, that I learned is actually using your hand to see how harsh Ooh. the lighting is. Okay. So sometimes I will actually use my finger to see if let's say it casts um, the shadow, how dark the shadow it will be and how soft it will be. Oh, so I've actually you, never thought of that before. Yeah, you can actually see like how you look like on the model face. Uh. So if like it's very harsh, right, it will be completely white. So sometimes uh, I will try to avoid that, but if let's say um, in a situation like if that's the case, right, I will actually use uh, other way to capture the sunlight. Like I will use like backlighting and stuff. Cool. Mm. I learned something today using my hand. <laughs> because I always like ask my wife, can you stand there? I just want to see how the light hit your face. Can you turn here? Can you turn there? Oh, now there's a simpler way using hand. Now yeah. I know. <laughs> okay, uh, next one. Just now we're talking about underrated. How about overrated light? Personally, if you experience, of course, there's no right or wrong, just your personal opinion. What would be that uh, one portrait photo trick, right, that you've seen done over and over again that it's overrated at this point in your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. Because <laughs> I'm actually okay with everything. I think, like, um, probably overrated. Mm. I think bokeh, ba. Okay. <laughs> but then I don't think it can help. That's the thing, because I think mm. bokeh is still uh, there is a place for it. There's a place for it. Mm. You need to focus on your subject. That's Correct. why there's a bokeh. But I think not to the point where everything like all okay then you can't see anything. Mm. Then that's uh, probably I feel like uh there's no focus on the background also. Uh. So I think like okay, so if let's say you're shooting blue sky and stuff, mm. bokeh behind is okay. The yes. green greenery or mm. bokeh behind is fine. But let's say um, if there's a focus, like let's say you are shooting in a market, you want the focus to be on a market, but then the market becomes all circle, you can't see anything, uh, then you lose the point of like shooting in a market and stuff. Basically like using bokeh that, a, to, to the point that it loses the meaning and yeah. it's just covering up your, your photography just to 
go for the likes and stuff like that. Yeah, right? I think like uh, it's probably most important is like using bouquet to your advantage. Mm. Like let's okay. say if the place is ugly, then you cover it up. Then it is that fine. Uh, that's I think fine. Mm. But I think if let's say the place is ugly, I won't shoot there in the first place. Uh. Mm. So you will actually find another place that's unless true. you really have no choice. If let's say you work with like clients and stuff, you end up in uh, some weird place, yeah. then you probably use bouquet to cover it up. But I think that's not the best way to do it. Mm, like, I agree. Always plan ahead. Uh, have a what's that called backup plan and stuff. Mm. Yeah, to go with it. I agree. Something I'll add to this is uh, is something that I learned. Like whether it is bouquet or any other elements, you know, like creating depths and all that, right? All these are good tricks, but like when you actually use them meaningfully it actually adds story to the photo rather mm, than you know, being something that is actually of distraction from the photo because mm. yeah. i see sometimes right, i see people take mm. photos but then probably they take photos they want to show the bouquet then they um uh, they focus on the road and stuff that i think like there's no purpose to the photo it just mm. look aesthetically nice mm. but i don't feel any it doesn't add la. Yeah, it doesn't feel anything to me. La, but mm. I, I'm not like criticizing yes, those photos, definitely. but I feel like it just doesn't click to me. Mm. Uh. I understand. I understand. Okay. Uh, something that is uh, fun to ask you. If, let's say, we could visit Japan next week. Okay. Let's say whatever pandemic thing is suddenly magically over, we visit Japan next week. And you could actually either bring only either a film camera or a digital camera. Mm. Which one would it be? I think I'll bring film. Why? Because I feel like Japan is a really great place to use film. Okay. Because <laughs> the lighting is really perfect. Mm. And let's say you predict like sunlight, right? It will be sunlight. Mm. If let's say you shoot a uh, film in Singapore, if you look at the weather forecast, it say uh, it's sunny right now. It could be raining like the next minute. Mm. Or it could be like, let's say cloudy and stuff. Then it's it, it defeats the point because yeah, I think like film yes. uh, most important element I feel like it's always like having the sunlight to make it shine out like have the contrast and True. stuff I mean you can shoot without sunlight as well but it's just like the lighting you really need to yeah. be consistent if not like the whole you're just blending with the whole film colour yeah <laughs> plus at the point of recording it's gonna be autumn soon in Japan and mm. I think that will be very nice I, like yeah. stuff. I think I love autumn <laughs> the most is it Oh uh, no, actually I love spring the most, but I think I like all seasons, even summer. La. So I think every season, uh, there's a reason like, uh, there's a, there's a, what's I call there's a nice view. Yes. And there's a, there's a photo you can take of, yeah, I think you can take. So I think like, um, actually I enjoy all seasons, even they are hot or humid Who doesn't? Stuff. Basically it's Japan, that's it already. La. Yeah, oh. correct. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of our audience is actually asking, right? Mm. Um, what camera are you currently using? <laughs> okay, so I, I think for digital. Yeah, I mean. for digital, I'm using the cheapest DSLR you can find. Okay. So, cause for me, right, I which don't. Is, which one? Okay, uh, six D, Canon six D, EOS EOS six D. I think I bought it at one thousand only. Oh, okay. <laughs> Second hand. Okay, one thing I like to emphasize is I don't buy my photography gears at very expensive price. Okay, so I actually bought them at the cheapest price as possible. I use the cheapest lens, cheapest camera, everything like on a budget. So I think like my camera is uh, 6D. Uh, it's actually like very limited function. Mm. I think they only got nine points. Mm. I think uh, like focus point. Yeah, no camera nowadays only have nine focus point. Yeah. But one very key point is right. Uh, when I take photo, probably I will when I use uh, digital. Sometimes I will use uh, probably uh, Canon 50mm or sometimes I will use like a uh, old, um, what's that called, vintage lens. Mm. So I will use manual focus a lot mm. instead of, last time I used to do a lot of autofocus but I love manual focus. Mm. Even though sometimes I miss focus, right, like I didn't get the eyes, right, but you know that manual focus, you can't be 100% like pinpoint to the point. I, I don't have like focus picking on 6D. Yeah. I don't have like a, uh, like any other tools, I can just zoom in and then I see, okay, it's focused and I just take. So it's a challenge there. Where that you I enjoy, actually, like, it's yeah, a little I, game that you enjoy. Yeah, I actually enjoy using like yeah. manual focus. Wow. I use manual focus all the way because I, I feel like it's a, it's a point, a process that I like. And I think that you brought up a very good point there is not to let your gear limit you, Correct. which is why 
that you know if you were to really go back and refer to his body of work again i think you'd be surprised that he just told us that uh, his camera is only has nine focus points cheapest gear possible and yet he produced the kind of work that he actually does yeah uh, just to say i'm not sure if it's nine focus point i think it's nine focus but i know it's less than 15. Yeah, it's way less than whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now the, <laughs> the camera is offering. Get, yeah, correct. <laughs> I did thought of changing camera, but I feel like that's it's not a necessary point, like Because I think like I can do what I want with the camera right now, but that's not a like I won't need that kind of expensive camera. Right. What now. with what you have, lah. Yeah. That's what you're having it too. Well, what would be your favorite lens at the moment, and why? <laughs> I think that's a bit tough. Because I think I got three lenses that I always use. Mm. Um, your go to, your first. You say three, right? What are the three? Okay, first I think will be Helios. Okay, the Helios 44 uh, I, two, is it? Yeah, 44 two. The one that I have as well. Okay. Yeah, correct. So I think that's my first lens I use because mm. I love manual focus. Yes. So that's the first lens. Yes. The second lens, uh, sometimes I will use will be. A Pentax lens. Pentax lens. But I didn't use that much of them really. Okay, wait, wait. I like to put this on the third one. Okay. Second, I will. I use most is actually Canon 85mm. Okay. Yeah. Because I think I wanted to have a very different focal length mm. that I try out. I think 85, I, I quite enjoy it. And also, uh, it's actually at 1.4. Mm. So, um, it's interesting, mm. but I don't really use that often because I still prefer Helios most. Okay. So the other two that uh, I use most of uh, probably 85 when I want that um, compression look and I want that um, that kind of look that I want, then I probably use that lens. Probably so you use sometimes, Helios the most? Like? Yeah, Helios. Because I think Helios will get what I want. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I think like um, it's a matter of like just met um, manual focus. Mm. I think a lot of people not very patient with manual focus and sometimes people get lazy. For me, I enjoy a process like to focus and then change. But the, the disadvantage is always like to have to tell the model, hey, wait, uh, <laughs> I need to focus. <laughs> yeah, oh, wait, yeah, wait, yeah. yeah. You wait, uh, you chill first. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not like wait three seconds or uh, like wait for one minute and stuff. Yeah. It's just like you just need to tweak. Sometimes about five seconds. Yeah, two seconds, second, three seconds. But yeah. I have to tell the model to wait for a bit. Uh. All right. Because not, they would think that you're already taking the photo. Yeah, yeah. First, <laughs> yeah, I think that's I the that disadvantage well. of it. If let's say you've got focus picking, probably you can move faster. Yeah. But let's say you have to magnify, uh, like zoom in and stuff. You have to zoom, then you have to see, then mm. after that you adjust. Yes. So that's the point. Cool. Uh, very last question, but I think this is quite fascinating. <laughs> I'm very curious to know as well. Uh, it's from a photographer friend. She's actually asking, right, if you see the world through a certain color palette, like whether it is you see it in cool colors, when you see it in warm colors, or you see it in desaturated colors, or in her own words, you see it in a certain fua fua lens. Fua fua, as in for those people who are not very familiar with Japanese language, and that's soft. That means you actually see it in very soft colors. Okay, so in my thoughts, I already have um. Uh, a color palette in mind before I actually started shooting. So I think like they actually have that vision that what I'm shooting. Like for example, like what uh, I think the person is asking. Mm. Um, I think probably I will go for a very soft, very natural kind of color, mm. blue and a uh, very neutral color, or mm. uh, a bit of white, mm. green, and very soft colors and stuff. I think I won't go too complicated on like. Uh, colors where they have a lot of colors mixing here and there. Ma maximum, I probably would go for um, about two to three colors. Yeah, I think two co uh, three colors is the max I think I will go mm. for pairing up. I think I won't like to go too complicated as well. Yeah, so I think like through a lens, I think it's probably a soft color. Cool, cool. Yeah, and that basically wraps up uh, all the questions for today. I think we learned tremendously a lot. I personally learned a lot from uh, this conversation with Elvin. I finally managed to get him to actually sit down to talk about his photography and journey and uh, as much as uh, I've been a fan of his and knowing his work so closely, yet I learned really quite a lot from what he actually shared today. I'm really thankful for that. Thanks mm. so much for coming on to the show. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Uh, just to say right, yes. uh, 
disclaimer all these things are just my personal feel of so course. there's there's no like criticizing or anything of yeah. course of course so uh those of you who are watching uh please actually uh, you know leave some comments uh, and leave any questions and uh, both of us will actually uh, you know attend to those uh, questions if let's say any uh, if you're watching on uh, if you're listening on spotify sorry please leave a five star review please i think i need it uh, it's a very very young uh, podcast i need all the support that i can actually get uh, if not thank you so much for watching or listening and uh, yeah and we will see you in the next episode Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.